Greetings and salutations from the Idaho Renaissance Fair YouTube page. We have an extremely special video that we are doing today and I'm going to let all of my lovely ladies here tell you what makes it so special. So, hi, I'm Kathleen. I'm president of Idaho Renaissance Fair. Um, and this is our lovely Denise and Janet. And today we're going to do a dressing of a French queen. Uh, Denise has graciously agreed to resume Margot for this and we're going to show you all of the fantastic layers that go into dressing a, a Renaissance French queen. So would you like to explain what we're doing? Okay. Yes. So I am Marguerite de Valois. I am a queen of France, 1590s. My mother is Catherine de Medici. She was also known as the Serpent Queen. Now, um, this is almost 100 years or more after the, the time of the Idaho Renaissance Fair takes place, which is 1492. 1490s. At that time, the Medicis were still climbing in the ranks. So we will begin with, this is, uh, this is where I would, I would wake up and I would, I would begin my shift or my chemise, because I'm French, and I would put on my stockings, my wonderful stockings. Because you don't want to show them ankles. Oh, no. no can't no. show our ankles. Show my ankles. Got my hammer things. <laughs> and then I would put on my corset or stays. And I would always have ladies helping me. And in France, it gets really ridiculous. And we, we were like, we were like, is that right? Is that right? Is that right? Oh, that is right. Oh. Get my arm in there. Uh, yeah. It, these are kind of hard, so I don't have any. Uh, they, they used to put little ends. This is a fun little fact. They put ends on the on on the ropes. Yeah. They put ends on the ropes. They were called aglets. That helps get it through the holes. I do. I need to get some aglets. I tried aglets on these, and they came off. So, yeah. Fun little historical fact as well, the reason that women's shirts button up on the left instead of on the right is because of the assistance they were getting from the ladies in waiting when buttons became much more popular and were able to be more integrated into the fashion. That's why women's button up the opposite of men's. It's the French's fault. It, it is. It's we, always the French. We are, we are, the, it's <laughs> where haute couture comes from. We are fashion. We have to be this way. And um, the, uh, the um, other most important part is the queen would only be dressed by her ladies in waiting. And ladies in waiting are landed nobility that, um, that have been sent to the queen to find them husbands. So they are her companions, but more than anything, they are her dressers. Because boy, did we need it. <laughs> and it became a real dance towards uh, Marie Antoinette's time where it was the closest sister to the Dauphin. And because the Dauphin is the uh, heir apparent. Um, in England, there would be, he would be the Prince of Wales. In France, he is the Dauphin. And my husband is Henry Navarre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, like Henry. 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 I guess we'll keep him. him. <laughs> it was my mother's choice. <laughs> really, never was our choice. Oh no, never was their choice. I wasn't even Catholic. Rude. No. Why did the king of Portugal? Well, he was at least Catholic. Yes, yes. Well done. <laughs> And believe it or not, stays are more comfortable than the modern corset. <laughs> but don't necessarily talk when you're putting the I was going to say, never talk when you are being corseted, because it just doesn't work. Alright. Stays on. <laughs> but with, with, a, with the stays or with the corset, whichever one, shoes, especially if they are boots that lace or buckle, Shoes first, boots before corset. Lace, lace boots, then corset on. So, okay, what what so, comes next, Your Majesty? So next is the farthingale. 
Okay. Tell you we are extravagant. All of this is to keep people away. Right, so hold that thing. I do believe if when we were talking about this. Please grab me up. There are several ways to do this. If you are the queen, your ladies help you. If you do not have ladies in waiting, okay. you do the bouts. <laughs> <laughs> the next is the bum roll. Oh. <laughs> Let's just trip over. Yeah. So the bum roll goes around the back. Turn around. Well, I'll turn around while you're doing that. This, the bum roll will carry the most of the weight of the dress. So it had a function other than aesthetics. Yes. Yeah, because the with dresses the, are heavy. Everything on it, it's so heavy and it takes that like if you are wearing a dress like this and you do not put on a bum roll, you will hurt your back. You can hurt your back for real. And the tabs on the stays would help hold out the bum roll. What did you just put on? This is the underskirt. Um, it is, uh, as you can see, it's not all decorated because the parts that are not seen, you don't need to. So it, usually a, a regular uh, fabric, a linen, would be used for the under, and then the fancy silks and pearls would be on the seam part that is shown. Next is the overdress. This is the fun one. This is the hard part. <laughs> Yeah, I got it. it. Oh, that's your camera. I thought that was a bun. No. Okay. Where is it? There it is. It's kind of entangled up right here in the stage. There we go. All right. We'll tie those after we lace yes. the back. Yes. This okay. is a stomacher. It usually, um, it evolves. This like, this is from the uh, Tudor times up until now, this stomacher just gets more and more elaborate. This, this will be a, um, a fashion statement well into the 1700s is the stomacher. Um, in the 1700s, the stomacher is actually used to cover the stays and it goes under some lacing. In this one, it is it is part of the dress. And now, okay, probably want to turn around so you can see the lace in the end. <laughs> Everything is laced. Yes, yeah. so it takes a little time. Yeah, there's no such thing as zippers. Now, I think we heard a zipper earlier on the, uh, the hoop skirt thing. Well, the, the underpinnings, you know, for modern days, so I can't, I can't get all, period accurate on that one. <laughs> but uh, because this is uh, actually my farthingale is not tradi not a traditional farthingale that has cane hoops all the way up. I got one from um, a lot of this stuff and this is for um, all of us, you know, fun runnies that, that are kind of creating our costumes. This is a repurposed prom dress. So, um, you know, some of us cannot afford wonderful places like Pendragon Costumes that make everything from the ground up. So we, we, uh, we create. And this was my prom dress back in 1988. <laughs> I was never gonna wear it again, so I decided to repurpose it. And that gives you double, you've definitely gotten your money's worth out of oh, that yes. at this yeah. point. And I thought it was expensive at the time. Well, it probably was at the time. Yeah, it was like $250. Although compared to my Japanese friend who got a, uh, a, a authentic kimono. Uh, you know. Oh, I would, mm, they're so beautiful. Yes. All right, you wanna turn forward and so, we'll tie you? Hold on for just oh, a second. Yeah. So behind the lacing, there's usually some fabric to cover up the undergarments. That's part of the modesty panel. Yeah, and that's what that, that is, but we don't have to use it. 
right, let's turn her forward. Yeah. Okay. And then on the front of the, where the, the overdress and the underskirt come together, they usually had a tie or a button or a hook or something that would keep it closed. That way, nobody knows that this beautiful, extra expensive material doesn't go all the way around. Okay. The sleeves. <laughs> right. That one should be the right. And we left. Right. Sleeves in most, most garments, well into the 20th century, were often detachable. So, is it? Yeah. so these would be put on and then they would be tied at the top. It's like a, they, the, 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 the sleeves are actually going to go down to my hands. So it's okay. Yeah. It's been a while since I put on my sleeves. I don't so. think I've ever seen you put on your sleeves. No, I, actually. I actually wear a different chemise under those uh, uh, for these because the, um, when I had my fair, it was in the spring at some of the some of the hottest temperatures. Yeah. And so I always uh, I was lighter under here. But wonderful thing about this is this farthingale holds out the skirts, so there's some air under here. And um, once my ladies are done tying me in, I will show you how we air condition ourselves in these oh, kind I of dress. Oh, I screwed up. I messed up. That's yeah, I'm a little bit particular. Usually you only have to do two to three, and I did five. <laughs> I got excited. I missed I got one. Excited. I missed one. I missed sorry. One. Okay. See, and I altered my chemise for Queen of Belita's dress because I have, my sleeves are actually sewn on, they're not mm -hmm. detachable like my other two. Um, I cut the sleeves off because it's getting way too hot. Yeah, it's like, I, I've, I've, had, I've had a lady's dress that uh, had the sleeves attached and exactly, you want to be able to detach your sleeves. And the fun part about when you're watching period dramas, you know when they've done their homework when you see detachable sleeves. Plus, with the sleeves on my chemise, it looked like I was a bodybuilder all of a sudden. I was like, well, that's, that's good. This is yeah. like big bulky arms and nothing else. That's probably not a good look. It was like the 80s when they <laughs> all had, arm, had shoulder pads and you, you look like a linebacker. <laughs> Bring back shoulder pads. <laughs> I cut them out of them. And I was like, um, Which ref would you like? Oh, the, the smaller one or the? The smaller one. Okay. Alright. So, as a net covering, for yeah, her I'm modesty, yes. she would wear a ruff, which acts as her collar. Mm -hmm. Ruffs became very popular at the end of the Renaissance Fair. A Renaissance Fair. Renaissance? <laughs> the Renaissance era. Way into early 1700s. They were they were at their extreme popularity. I think the, yeah, the oh. goes in the back. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. She put some back one. That's my bad. It's alright. It's all right. So. But didn't they also get like bigger and bigger? They got they bigger. Made? They also had uh, ribaltos, and um, it, Queen Elizabeth, as most people see in a lot of Renaissance fairs, she had her ruffs. She also had her whisks. These were really big sails that went behind her. Mm. It was all about keeping, keeping people away. They were social distancing before it was cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so here's air conditioning. I had a friend who always said, this is air conditioning, forced air. <laughs> so now it would be. Are you ready for jewelry and crowns? Yeah. All um, right. The girdle. the girdle. So now it's all about adornment. It's all about looking your station, being sequined. As the queen, would you have gloves? I usually would if it's if it's if I know I'm going to be outside. Inside, I wouldn't necessarily need gloves. Um, the large item at the bottom is a pomander. This would often be filled with uh, potpourri, um, herbs, spices, 
mainly to keep the smell away because as you know we didn't really bathe um <laughs> they might have been spaying <laughs> um but nuts 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 in fact And as you can see, it's all about the opulence. Mm -hmm. Especially in France, we must have the pearls. And remember, this is this is a time when per, uh, culture. <laughs> well, on, where did it go? It's right there. Hang on, it's, it, you're choking around with the. <laughs> right, uh, cultured pearls were not a thing. People actually were diving for these pearls. So think about how many pearls are on this dress. I've never counted, and I don't think I ever will because it's a lot. Um, I do remember sewing them on. And wait. It's very satisfying to sew them on, though. I must it say. Is. It is very it satisfying, is very to, satisfying sew to sew them on. The little, them all on. On little X's. Rings. A nice assortment of okay. rings and usually precious jewels. You know there. I, I didn't want to force over that. Oh, it's okay. Not well. It's an <laughs> extender. So, and finally, we would have the crown. Uh, most of the time, crowns were usually usually worn during during official business to prove that you are the queen. And uh, you. Other than that, if you were going outside, you would always have someone something on your head. If you did not have the crown, you would have a hat, um, but the hat would be, of, of, of course, extravagantly decorated. It would have feathers, silk, pearls, of course. Mm -hmm. um, one of Margot's wonderful portraits it has, it's, it's not a crown, it's a hat, and it's got a spray of pearls. Um, she also wore wigs. Now, this is a wig with, this is a, a snoop. Traditionally women wore wigs at the time because they didn't want to bother with putting their hair up. And it was fashionable. Everybody wanted to be better than everybody else. And um, here's a surprising interesting fact about English Renaissance at this time. Queen Elizabeth, as we know, unfortunately had the pox. This caused her to lose her hair early. She had a high forehead, mainly because she had no hair. She wore wigs. Women wanted to match the queen. We are, we are the epitome of fashion. So women started shaving their foreheads. Like, yeah, they put, cut it back. Like, <laughs> like way, way back. We would, we would, Kat yeah. and I would be like, yeah, okay, shave that. Going. <laughs> So they could do that and then put their hair up. This is a traditional late Renaissance hairstyle. It's it's to mimic the heart. Same thing with my lips. The makeup would have lead in it. Yeah. And other uh, other um, caustic materials. And the more you used it, the more the more it would hurt you. But this is the look you want to be. You want to look pale, like you've never seen the daylight, because. Uh, White, white is the thing. You want to be white as a, as a, as a statue. Yeah. So parasols and umbrellas were a big deal to, if we're going to be outside, we got to be covered. No sun. Mm -hmm. Sun no is bad. Sun. Yes. And, uh, yeah. So at, at this point, I would be done with my dressing and I would be able to promenade. And she would lead us all into court. And there's two days, either like a wing or wonder, two reasons why the farthingale exists is one, to keep the skirts from tripping on the skirts. But I have recently learned there is a new type of walking. It is called the Versailles Shuffle. And Versailles was just a hunting lodge in my day. It was, a, it was one of my step-grandsons that mm. eventually made it into the palace. They called it the Versailles Shuffle. That way, you did not trip over your skirts. Because otherwise, you have to almost kick. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you walk. That's that's vulgar. <laughs> Nobody likes to do that when they walk. 
get some more air conditioning in. Whee! <laughs> and this is how you dress a late Renaissance queen, Marguerite de Valois of France. So thank you guys for joining us. We hope that your history is fun as our history. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and post them in the comments so that we can address them later. And we hope that you guys have an awesome day. Huzzah! Huzzah! Huzzah.